Hello, Virgo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Virgo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Virgo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. Six of Swords. Good energy. Um, this is a solid plan. This is a beautiful and harmonious way forward. This is our blueprint. This is our divine plan. This is kind of like we've we've got the, the, blue, the blueprints right here in front of us and we're ready to put this plan into action. Okay? This, is, this feels very good. Uh, it feels like all of the pieces have come together and suddenly the entire picture is being revealed to you. You know, um, let's put this into some context because I feel like there was a point where we weren't so clear on what this big plan was. You're seeing the big picture now. It's kind of like spirit has allowed you to see the, the entire plan. You know, whether this is just the plan of your own life or this is the, the big plan, you know. Yeah, there's the seven of, of swords. I feel like there was a time where you didn't have that. Okay, we've got the Luster Strength card. We've got the Knight of Cups. We've got the Temperance card. We've got the Magician. Very good. We've got the Eight of Pentacles. We've got the Star. Look at that. That is now the Divine Plan. And I think you're understanding now, because if we look at this, this is really, really cool. Um, you see the bigger picture, you see the divine plan, you understand you've, re you know, they, you've been given the blueprints and now you're understanding what role you play in this bigger picture, because this is the bigger picture in the environment now. So this is like the, the actual big picture and this is the blueprint of it, right? This is to scale and this is literally it out in the, in the world. Um, and you're understanding your connection of what your role is in manifesting this bigger picture. Okay, so I think you're understanding both your the role that you're playing in your personal life, right? The plan that that spirit has for you in your personal life, but then also how your personal life fits into the bigger plan, the grand scheme of things, right? Five of wands and oh, ooh, nine of cups at the end. Yes, perfect. Um, I think it's because of your. I don't know. I, I think it's because of your heart, really. I think it's because of, of who you are and the gift that you have and also your, your, your spiritual generosity, you know? I feel like you've got a lot to give. You've got a lot to, to offer, and Spirit, I think, is really kind of selecting you for a very special place in this grand scheme, in this big, big plan, right? In this, uh, this really, this, this cosmic orchestra, that we're all part of. You've got a very important part to play. Yeah. I like this very much. I don't think you were, you were always very certain about your role, right? We got a six and seven of swords here. You weren't always certain. And it could even be now that you're, we're having a little bit of doubt. Because see, look, this is perfect. This is absolutely perfect. But we do have that little bit of Seven of Swords to go on top of that. So it's kind of like, um, it's almost like we've been selected for this really big spiritual mission, this divine plan, and we're kind of just thinking, we're, who, me? You know, we're thinking, why am I so special? What do I have? What is, the, what is it that I'm supposed to offer, right? And uh, I think the idea here is don't try to figure it out. Just be yourself. Share with the world what you are, who you are, right? Don't change anything. Don't change anything. We don't see a lot of air cards here. Just the two right here. 
It's just the certainty, the clarity, the beauty, the balance, the harmony and resonance, and the shakiness, the uh, not so sure kind of energy. And that's it. Everything else, fire, earth, air with the unit with the, the the star card here is some air energy and some water we've got some fire here with these two Sagittarius and Leo so it's not really it's it's kind of spirit saying don't worry about it don't try to figure it out accept your role accept the the part that you're meant to play here it feels like a prophecy you know it really really does let's select the mystery card bonus card confirmation card this is going to be a random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. We're just going to set it right here. We're going to put Alien Simon Moore Gripley right there on top. Now, we're not going to look at that card until the very end, but it will tie everything together, I promise. Okay? It'll give us our confirmation. If at any point during the reading you feel like you know what that card is, please put your prediction in the comments down below. I think we should do it as a group exercise. I want to make the channel more interactive. I want your audience participation, you know. But I think it's good for us. I think the more we exercise our intuition, even if it's just a guess, just a random guess, first thing that comes to your head, right? Don't overthink it. That's the message here. I guarantee over time, we'll get better and better at predicting that, okay? We need to exercise our intuition as often as we can. You can do it any time, day or night. Watching TV, just, you know, blurt something out. You know, try to predict, try to guess something. Just blurt something out. Don't think about it too much, right? And I think over time we'll realize that it's really our thinking that gets in the way of us fulfilling the, the divine plan. You see, sometimes the magician is that intuitive energy too, right? But this is intuition that's been practiced and refined and honed, right? Pra practice something. And this is, this is us doing the work, meditating, praying, doing our rituals, exercising, reading books, doing breathing, all, whatever it is that you do to try to open up your heart and your mind, open up your soul to receive the, the, the well, to receive the divine blueprints, right? To receive the divine blueprints. And I think that you have received this, or you will be, or this is what, is what is happening in your life right now. The bigger picture of things is being revealed to you, okay? I think it's the bigger picture of your own life, of kind of what you're meant to do, what your path to happiness is, right? Nine of cups at the end. What is the role that you are meant to play in your own life? What is this identity? What is this mask that we're wearing? We realize that identity is not really a, an actual thing, right? We realize that ego is not a biological fact. It's something that we construct. And if it's something that we build, it's something that we can build, that we can change, that we can mold, right? And I think spirit is really showing you through this mercury energy, this magician, this trickster, juggler, this performer, right? what the role is that you're meant to play in your life. Many different roles, sure, you know. Um, we, we wear many, many hats, right? And I think Spirit is showing you exactly which hats are for you, when to trade one for the other, you know, when to swap them out. Uh, you know, it's, we're, we're a lot of things, but none of these things are actually our essential self. I'm a father, I'm a tarot reader, I'm a content creator on YouTube, uh, I'm a husband, I'm a, a, a citizen of the town that I'm in, you know, I'm a taxpayer, um, uh, I'm I don't, not a musician, I, 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 I'm an amateur, uh, you know, drummer. Um, we, we're a lot of things, you know, I'm a student, I'm, um, I'm a fool, uh, I'm a clown sometimes. Um, we wear a lot of these different hats. We are many, many different things, but I am not any one of those things. Just like you wear many hats, you do many different things in your lives. And when you are, when you're a parent, you don't really have the exact same hat on that you do when you're at work, right? I mean, sometimes there's some, some overlap, right? Sometimes it feels like we're a parent where we have to be kind of a babysitter when we're at work, but that's a different story. Um, but none of these things are actually us. 
you know. At the end of the day, really, we take off all these hats. Who are we? We, are, we just are. We are just a, a uh, kind of a, a, a constellation of energies. And sometimes that constellation of energies puts on the hat of a delivery driver or a data entry person, you know. And that's what we do for a certain amount of time every day. And I think Spirit's showing you this in a very real way. The different hats that you wear and how all of these hats are you, but also not you. And I think Spirit is showing you the path to your true happiness. Right? Uh, which ha and, and really, ultimately, it doesn't matter which hats we wear. Just so long as, as we're, we're, we're enjoying wearing it. We're doing it for a purpose. We're doing it for a reason. I always say it doesn't matter exactly what you're doing, but how and why. Yeah. Why are you wearing those hats? And what is your approach? What is your Tao? What is your way of doing that work? I don't need to know what the work is. That's why in these readings, I don't, I very often try to avoid giving specific details. Maybe you work at a clothing store, you know? Maybe you sit behind a debt, maybe you work for an insurance company. It doesn't matter, really, you know? That could change anytime you want it to. It could change even when we don't want it to. Because change is change. Change happens. You're being given the gift of sight right now. Spirit is showing you exactly what your gifts are, what you're good at, what your talents are, what your love is, what your heart is saying. What does your heart want? Spirit is showing you the way to start wearing those hats. Okay? To ultimately get to, fulfill your destiny to get to your nine of cups. This is the pursuit of happiness. This is also the function. This isn't what you're doing. This is how and why. And how and why is with purpose, with intent, with satisfaction, with love and joy and bliss, with spirit, with soul. And sometimes we... We don't believe it. We feel like we're getting off course. Sometimes we feel like we're, we're a parent when we're at work. Sometimes we feel like we're a boss when we're at home with our kids or whatever. Sometimes we get a little confused in things. All we got to do is try to come back to center. Calm down, slow down, take a breath, and reharmonize. Get, get centered again. The whole secret of life is going from a seven to a six. Seven to a six. Seven to a six. Right? From off-balance to balance. From off-center to center. From confusion to clarity. From discord to harmony. That is life. And that's kind of what makes the music, too. You know? It's kind of what makes life a little bit interesting. If, things, if it, there was always harmony, the song would be a little boring. We need intervals. You know? We need steps. We need some silences. Maybe your gift is music. Maybe that's part of the part of maybe that's one of, of many hats that you wear. Okay. And I think the the um, the Knight of Cups here is you being willing to give that, wanting to share what you have and what you are with the world. Even if sometimes we don't know what our gift is, or our gifts, plural. Sometimes we don't know what they are. That's okay. We're making that effort. We want to share. We want to give. We feel love. We feel compassion. And because of that, I think you're being rewarded with sight, with the vision for your own life of how to be happy. But in the grand scheme of things, what does your light, what does your constellation of energy mean to the rest of the cosmos? You're part of this infinite tapestry of stars, of constellations, uh, maybe planetary systems or something, right? And um, the lust or strength card down below beneath the surface, this I think is your creative drive. And I think that it's, these three cards here are very important. Because I feel like you have this creative energy, you have this kind of, this passion, this, this burning, yearning, you know, drive and desire within you. And we're kind of looking for an expression of that. And this is that test kitchen. I love this card so much because it reminds me of being a chef. Not that I was never a chef, but of that kind of aspiration, of that like, 
I, I, I feel like in another life I, was, uh, I worked in a kitchen. I really do. Uh, it's, it's this experimentation. It's this passion. It's this, this rush, this whirlwind of energy. It's this exhaustive thing. You think about being in this kitchen, it's, it's all of these things. You're trying to get through a dinner service. It's a, it's a test. You know, it's, um, it's a trial by, by fire and oil and, you know, ovens. It's really a test and really a challenge. And it really, it's, it's an accomplishment at the end of the night when you find the closing down you're just, and you're wiping the counters down, you're cleaning the stove and stuff, and it's just like winding down. But it's a lot of, a lot of things. There's a lot of, um, a lot of emotions in here, a lot of energies in that kitchen. And it's kind of an experiment, too. Sometimes you get to see what works, what doesn't work. What creations do people like and what do they not like? What creations do you like and not like? You know, very often I've experimented with food and I just, oof, what did I do? That's, t that's terrible, you know? It's inedible. One of my favorite shows is Top Chef. I'll tell you that. Padma and Tom are my favorites. Um... We're about to start on the new season, too. I, I don't know when that season came out, but I saw that there was one I hadn't watched yet. So we'll, we're going to check that out. Um, I feel like you're focused right now on, on doing that, on that kind of experimentation, on that kind of refinement, of putting yourself in the fire, in the, in the difficult, challenging situation to see how you perform, to see what you're good at, to see what you create, to learn more about who you are and about what your gift is. And I think this, too, is being rewarded with this vision. All this trial and error, really, all this experimentation, all of these nights in the kitchen, in the laboratory, right? Cooking is alchemy, right? Music is alchemy. Everything is, is alchemy. Uh, you being in that alchemical lab is being rewarded, is being paid back with vision, with the vision of the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah, sometimes we're still going to doubt and question. We're human beings after all, at least most of us are, I think. But leading forward is this magician. We realize now what, what aspects of ourselves we want to refine. All that work we've done in the kitchen, all this passion that we feel, what comes out the other end? You know? These talents and skills, these desires, these these hats that we wear, and we want to be the very best at wearing those hats. This is that performer on stage. This is a, a kind of a one-person variety show. You're doing everything, the comedy, the acting, the music. You've written the thing. You're doing the lighting, the cameras, all of it. You know, it's a one-person show. And these are all the very best parts of you being developed to their absolute very best. And this is you leading the way. You know? Um, I like this card as the, the performer. I like this card as the one that is on stage and maybe you, maybe it's a talent show, maybe it's a musical performance, maybe you're doing stand-up comedy. Right? I feel like there's some sort of performative aspect to your life. And I feel like this is, well, if we think of the, the comic out on stage in that test kitchen every night, say, at the comedy store or something, just working on new material, finding out what works, what doesn't. What makes us laugh may not be what makes other people laugh and vice versa. Um, but we're, we're in the kitchen. We're in that furnace, right? Trying to refine what we do. It's like a... Forging a sword, you know, goes into the fire, gets taken out, gets beat up a little bit, gets put back in the fire. Yeah. And that's how we refine our material. You know, I don't know if you, if you're, if you're into comedy or anything, but that's what they do, right? I mean, they, they have a, an act, right? Or a routine and they refine it. They refine their material. It's a very alchemical process. And they, I think they even really, they call it that. You know, refining their material. I'm refining my material. I'm taking it around all the comedy clubs and, and, and working on it. Working on my material. 
A very alchemical process. And I feel like that's what you're doing, even if it's not comedy. I kind of hope it is, but it doesn't have to be, you know. Well, let's go to the path of the serpent, because it's this wild refinement, it's this passion, it's this, the heat of the kitchen, you know. But it's also very much a slow and steady and careful process. It seems chaotic and crazy, right? You're just out here in this, it's just loud, it's noisy, it's fast paced, it's the kitchen, right? During dinner service. It's the comedy club at, at 10 o'clock on a Friday night. It's just, it's wild, yeah? But you've got this very purposeful, intentional attitude about it. You're careful, you're taking your time, you're doing it right. You see the bigger picture. So it's not frantic, we're not worried, we're not stressed, we're not, ah, we're not pulling our hair out. We know why we're doing it. We've seen that vision, you know? You've seen the bigger picture of your own life and in a very kind of spiritual, cosmic way, you've seen the bigger picture of, of life itself. Your life and life, you know, capital L. Um, and so you, you understand that there's really no need to rush. At the same time, we don't want to waste any time or effort. Well, we don't need to be frantic about it either, you know? It's really good. Um, the star card in the position of the environment, I think you're, well, I think maybe you're on your way to becoming a star. Okay, I'll just go ahead and say that, especially with this magician energy and the star card in the environment. environment um, you're well on your way to becoming that star in the environment. Okay, so I think that you are meant for a very important mission in life, that what you are doing in your particular life is going to be very important generally for the rest of us. Okay, so you're somebody that people are going to notice, that people are maybe are going to recognize, you know. So if we think of the six of swords as that divine plan, this is the implementation of that divine plan. This is that divine plan now being played out in the world. We've got a five here, and now it's very cool that we've got a five, a six, and a seven. Because I misspoke earlier when I said that the whole point of life, the whole secret of life is going from a six to a seven. Seven to a six. Really, the five is in there too. Because we gotta, we got to have balance, right? So it's not just one, two, one, two, seven to six, seven to six, seven to six. Off balance this way and then straight again. No, we've got to take the five into account too. We've got to take the five into account. So we're going five to six, five to six, maybe leaning over to the seven, you know. Um, and both sides of the coin, because of the odd numbers, right? The five and the seven. These two always represent our efforts to get back to the stable, even numbered six. The harmony, the beauty, right? The resonance. And sometimes we, uh, we fall into confusion. Sometimes we fall into doubt. Sometimes we fall into disbelief. Sometimes we try too hard or not enough, and we get off balance. So we've got the five of wands in the, the position of the obstacle, okay? And I think that sometimes these two cards connect as well, right? Because the eight of pentacles, but then there's the five. We have to always remember to slow down. So the five is connected down here with the eight. The slow, intentional, but sometimes we get caught up in the whirlwind of stuff and we start rushing around. That takes us off balance. We've got to remember to restore ourselves to the six. Take a breath, get back to center. If we get lost in this seven of swords, we have to remember to slow down, take a breath, get back to center. Okay. And the five is knowing really it's about learning how to use that knob on the stove, learning how to turn up the heat, learning how to reach out and grasp what we need, and learning how to maybe let go. Maybe it's the difference between grasping like this and just receiving, taking, right, or being, being given what we need. It's an active and a passive. It's a striving and it's a yielding. Okay. It's, um, 
it's us being aware that yes there is this harmony that there is this grand scheme of things you're seeing the bigger picture you've got the blueprint for reality now it doesn't absolve you of effort it doesn't absolve you of the need to make decisions and do things and to strive but then also now you kind of know you've got that six of swords you know when to stop striving you know when to speed up and when to let off the accelerator and let your car coast, you know? And I think that's really, that's the mark of a good driver. You ever notice that? Some people, they go from stoplight to stoplight and they're just on the gas, vroom, all the way to the next stoplight and then they hit the brakes. The experienced driver, the one that knows the bigger picture here, will speed up a little bit and then just coast and we'll just come gently into the next stoplight. You know, didn't have to really use the brakes at all. Yeah, you use the brakes only when you're going too fast, which means you've overdone it. Okay, and that's a very important analogy for you right now. Because we're very close to this nine of cups, this happiness, the dream come true, the dream life now that you are living physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, creatively, on every plane, all the way to the divine plane, you are abundant and activated and satisfied and, and, and thriving. This is fulfillment. This is living a life that is fulfilling in every action and every activity. It's not a solid thing. It's not an even number, right? This is the joy and pleasure that we get from living a life like this. It's an ongoing thing. It's not just, uh, there's no finish line here, you know? It's not what you're doing, but how. And this is how you're living right now. Right? Reminds me of that show, In Living Color. You ever watch that? Anyway, let's look at the mystery card. Bonus card, confirmation card. Let's see what aliens got for us. We're not, I... What do we need here, really? Maybe some earth energy, right? Maybe we need a little bit of, like, solid stuff, you know? Maybe an ace of pentacles, nine or a ten of pentacles. Maybe, just maybe. The hermit card. Your power card. Because that is an earth card. Right? That is an earth card. Maybe that's the kind of grounding that we need. Maybe that is us realizing our identity, realizing our own importance here in a relative way. Connecting with that light within, being able to see that certainty, see that clarity, see that six of swords blueprint of reality, you know. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. Let's see. Oh, yes, the hermit. Um, this is the reminder, too, not to... Not to... Um, reject or refuse this divine mission. You know, sometimes the hermit is about we, we're withdrawing from life, right? Sometimes this is the hermit saying, no, I don't want to be in the limelight. I don't want to be magician and star here. The hermit's going to say, no, thank you, right? To disengage from life. But I think that's, that's why we have this card now because you're getting, you have all of this energy here you have to ground it you have to you have to really um, manifest it and realize it in your life in a very physical tangible visceral way it has to connect right and that's i think why we've got the hermit it's not good enough to just keep all of this energy in we've got to now manifest it allow it to crystallize in your life allow it to connect like a, an electrical surge, connect it with the ground, you know? It's a very important card. And I feel like this is the beginning of the rest of your life. You know, it really does feel like a prophecy to me. It feels like this is just the beginning. I'm very excited for you. Uh, we're going to do an extended click on the link up here. There's a link down below. Uh, new readings for Virgo, Tuesday and Saturday. 6 a.m. Chicago time. I'm here every day. You can come see me again tomorrow. Okay. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It does not cost you anything. 
Leave a comment and let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you are the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.